Kyle Mohan Racing, KMR, and we've got some rotors. So in the past couple of videos, we've discussed the Mazda Trix prototype or uh, development project that they did, which was two-piece uh, aluminum and cast rotors in, uh, in an idea to create a super lightweight rotor. So utilizing an OEM rotor with uh, aluminum <laughs> inserts, which I think was really neat awesome idea and people are working on that idea still and then the Mazda Tricks moved on to the idea of actually casting their own rotor in titanium and then that evolution went into a titanium uh, rotor casing with aluminum uh, bearing carrier and steel apex seal inserts um, OEM gear and aluminum faces in an effort to create uh, the lightest rotor possible or ever made and have something that could withstand long-term usage um, by utilizing steel inserts and OEM components. Uh, obviously these were prototypes. The project never got completely finished, but Mazda Tricks, like I said in the previous videos, was nice enough to let me talk about these rotors and showcase them in a video, which we've never done before. Um, and uh, like I've said previously, they're not available from Mazda Tricks, but uh, Mazda Tricks definitely does have you covered for your OEM and aftermarket RX-7, RX-8, or rotary needs. Always a big shout out to Mazda Tricks. But uh, I think it was a really neat prototyping and exercise in what uh, rotors could be developed into. And uh, we did run some of these prototypes on the Mazda Trix dyno, but we were never happy with the results to any level to where we were going to, uh, you know, start running them or selling them or even using them for that matter. And uh, obviously cost did play a part in continuing the development, but, uh, you know, I was amazed while I was working at Mazda Trix how far this project came and just how close, uh, you know, we were to success and how much uh, prototyping and development went into it. So what I wanted to do today was kind of a wrap up. Um, one last just follow up. I think uh, I had mentioned the weights that we had on these prototypes and uh, castings, or at least no, I, I didn't mention it. I uh, put, put them in the description below, but I figured uh, I could do one last video just kind of showing what the weights are. Now these aren't completed rotors, so obviously these aren't finalized rates, uh, weights. This one's fairly com completed, um, but uh, some of these are half casings um, and half titanium shells or just the titanium shell. And then I've got two OEM rotors up front for comparable weights. This is all done in grams in case you're wondering. And uh, you know, if you're familiar with rotors in rotary engines, uh, they come in in a various ascendry of weights with your series fours, five, sixes getting progressively lighter um, and your earlier 13Bs being a little heavier. So this is actually a series four 13B coming in at about um, 4,618 grams. And then you have a lightened one that was just face cut, kind of your nice uh, Mazda Trix uh, style lightning that uh, brought it down to 4144. Um, but that's actually missing the bearing. So you're, you're, you got to do a little calculation for bearing weight on that one as where this one has the bearings. But you do get a, a decent drop in weight from just cutting the faces back where you have a little extra material and uh, reducing the overall rotating weight. Um, in an effort to take that much further, you can see we were getting into the low 40, probably twos uh, with the, that cutting. Um, you can see here with the aluminum face rotor, um, by just removing the faces and inserting aluminum, we were able to drop that down to, uh, you know, an approximate give or take, depending on the rotor you're starting with and how you do it, uh, 3482, 3,482 grams. So shaved, uh, you know, about a quarter of the weight out of that rotor, which is pretty significant just by aluminum facing it. Um, again, this is a project that needs a lot more testing and development. 
but uh, it's neat that Mazda Trix did this and is letting us talk about it. And one of the things that was really nice about this idea is it retained a lot of the OEM seal aspects, um, internal aspect and gear. So I think this uh, might be a really neat idea to continue. Um, and then obviously uh, this was just a shell that we had. And uh, I think this one we left a little more webbing in it than some of the others. But in the prototyping process, this shell without the aluminum faces came in a little heavier at 37, 34. So I think obviously this had some of the webbing taken out. Um, and then you've got your aluminum uh, titanium prototypes, which uh, obviously shed a lot more weight. This one's missing a face and a bearing, so it's obviously not complete, but you're getting down, uh, you know, 2404. And with just the shell that was not machined, obviously there's no internals here. Uh, 1,743. So it's just some ideas. Obviously these numbers are not complete numbers. Some are missing bearings, some are missing faces, but I know everybody wants to know what these things weigh. Uh, that's an obvious question. So I thought this was a good opportunity. I wrote down the weights um, and uh, just gave us a little bit of a picture of the trajectory of what this project had. Uh, the idea of being able to cut rotor weight in half, um, or even more so, depending on how you applied the idea, or at least uh, shaving you know, a quarter to a third out of your rotating mass. And if you think about that, that's never really been done outside of drag racing in rotary motorsports or rotary application. Uh, there are a few drag teams that have successfully ran aluminum rotors, but they're solid rotors. They don't have the internal oil passages and cooling that a rotary needs for long-term usage and application. Um, and to my knowledge, I, I know people are testing these ideas, but nobody's had success with any lightened or super light uh, style uh, custom-made rotors or face cut rotors. Obviously, this is the traditional lightning that's been being been done for 20, 30 years on rotors. Um, and some places like uh, uh, Racing Beat actually go in and will do internal lightning at uh, Mazda Tricks. We just do the face cutting. It's very reliable, very easy, very cost effective. But uh, you know, 10 years ago, we were dreaming of an aftermarket rotor. So I hope this uh, helps continue to paint the picture of what Mazda Tricks had going on. Thank you, Mazda Tricks. Thanks for watching KMR. Um, again, if you have questions about these, uh, you know, Mazda Tricks doesn't have a ton of answers at this point. That's why we did these videos. That's why we talked about uh, where we got to, which was basically just prototyping and developing. And so uh, I encourage everybody to get out there and continue the project. Thanks for watching, KMR. Follow us, check out Mazda Tricks. I'm gonna brap on out of here. We got aluminum and titanium rotors. I got race cars to work on and rotaries to build. Thank you, Rotary.